Hello, my name is Hope Hokaki. I'm an HR consultant and life and success mindset coach. Welcome to the Live Fully podcast, where we touch on everything in regards to growth, evolution, personal development, as well as some story times and interviews to keep it interesting. My hope is to bring you value and inspire you, entertain you, in order for you to live a more fulfilled life starting now. Thank you for tuning in and let's get started. Hi guys, welcome to the podcast number three. So we already have two filmed so far. I am filming my birth story today. My baby's sleeping on the couch. He's literally two days old. What day are we? Yeah, I'm pretty, yeah, he's two days old. I'm like a little bit out of it. So if I say things that are random or if I'm looking over there, like he's in his little snuggle me right beside me and I'm checking him out. He's so adorable. He's resting right now. So he's between feeds and he's gonna feed pretty soon. So I have time to film this story and then I have to feed him. I'm going to try to keep my voice down. You guys are definitely going to be picking up on the snow plow. So we had a big snowstorm yesterday. And when we came home with the baby, actually, it was a huge storm. So much snow got accumulating by the second on the road. And it was not fun for me at all. I hate that so much since I've had a really, uh, not a, yeah, had a really bad car accident in a snowstorm when I was 19. I'm pretty sure I have to talk to you guys about that because that's a big part of my journey where I had PTSD afterwards and I healed and all of that and I was able to overcome my anxiety but my anxiety attacks and my PTSD was really really bad so if my voice is low it's because I have a baby and I will definitely be upping it on iMovie when I edit I'll be making it louder because I don't think I'm speaking very loudly but you guys at least can hear me with my mic pretty clear I'm pretty sure I'm gonna try to film this right now I was motivated to do it I have a little gap where I'm alone with the baby everybody left um, so my family was here with me they were babysitting my oldest one who is 21 months now he's at daycare Papa is out running errands my sister just left um, we have more family coming tomorrow they were supposed to come today but with the snow they're coming tomorrow and other family was supposed to come my brothers were supposed to come as well tonight but they're not so I'm taking this little moment right now because this weekend is gonna be a lot of visiting and hands on deck to help us out with the baby so people our family's coming over to see the new addition to play with our current baby that loves them so much and to help us out a little bit and my focus is to be with my baby like get him in like the groove with me for breastfeeding which is i feel like a tough part of after like giving birth a tough part of postpartum so it's going well so far but we're I want it to keep going well so I'm going to be focusing on us and that and make sure we're both fed we're both good and that we're resting and then family's going to be with us to help take care of meals of my baby my other baby and um yeah my partner's with us as well so I wanted to share my labor story because it's definitely a mindset story and it's definitely a story that can inspire you no matter if you're going to give birth or not no matter if you're a woman or a man it's going to inspire you because it's all about mindset and it's all about how I overcome my, I overcame it once again for my second birth, my mindset to be able to have a birth that I actually wanted and to give birth naturally without epidural and to really learn to overcome the sensations that go on in birth. So I'm sure that you're, you guys are all familiar with birth. Birth is definitely something that's very intense. Your body is so powerful and it's literally giving life to another human being like it's insane what happens when you give birth i feel like it's such a surreal experience and it has a really bad rap in our society it has an extremely bad rap people are scared of it when i used to tell people before even being pregnant when i was younger i've always wanted to try to do it natural and try to understand what it is and to understand how it works and how the body works and how it can be done because i mean animals do it we do it like it has been done naturally for so many years now we have hospitals which help us in so many ways they're great um in my personal opinion so everybody has their opinion but i feel like they're great for actually helping people give birth and not having issues but i mean if you are if you think about it and if you're healthy and you're okay your body it's a natural thing that it's doing and it should not be devastating you scaring you giving you anxiety which it does to a lot of us and it did for me too even for my second baby so my first baby was a natural birth story i shared it on youtube if you want to uh, if you want to listen to all of it you can definitely listen to it so i had a natural birth story with lenny at the hospital and that's my thing is that i go to the hospital because i still have that voice inside of me that wants that 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 wants that environment like some people want to go natural and want to be at home and all of that i stay at home for a long time i'll explain how i do it and how i did it 
for both labors, but I mean, I still want to be, I definitely still have the feeling to want to be in a hospital setting in case. And this is important to mention because that's my point of this story is that it's definitely a mindset story and we all have those voices up until the end of my labor, up until I gave birth and I started laboring, even in the beginning of my labor. So with this labor, I was in labor, like it started, it was close together, six minutes apart, and then it slowed down. And when it slowed down, I started doubting myself and I was like, I can't get through these because my contractions were very apart, like 20 minutes apart, 10, 12, 10 to 20 minutes apart, which is like, it's hard for you to get in the groove. It's hard for you to get into the rhythm of like, they're coming like every five minutes and you're able to get into it. And it was hard for me to stay focused and not get anxious and not start feeling like, oh my God, how did I even do this the first time? This is so intense because it is intense, definitely intense. Like there are surges, there are waves, there are contractions, there your, your uterus is pushing down the baby. And for some weird reason, we have the urge to contract against contractions which is obviously not the point. The point of the contraction is there to help push your baby out. And if you go against it, you're going to cause yourself pain and you're going to be in pain for sure. So this is my point of it being a mindset story is that it's definitely something where you need to overcome and to understand how your brain works and help your brain fire like the right things and the right thoughts so that you can get into the groove. So like I was saying, the part, I'll explain all the details, but the part of my labor that slowed down, I started doubting myself and I wasn't feeling great. When I started doing that, I, I was, they were contractions that were really much tougher to get through and they were hurting. And when I got in the zone, I was able to like get in there and activate and have the right mindset. And like they were much more intense, much closer together, much longer contractions, but I did not feel them the same way at all. And I was able to get through them and they didn't hurt me as much. So it's like, it's not black and white, but it's my goal in sharing this story is for you guys to get inspired by it and to know that there are different ways because I feel like we don't talk about it enough. I want to give you guys tips and tricks of like knowing things that I learned from our doulas or from just research, such as you can wear your own pajamas to the hospital. I don't know if you, where you guys are, but if you're in Canada, oftentimes we think we need to put on the robe. You can definitely keep your pajamas and that's what I did when I got there. Um, you just ask them and they're like, yeah, no problem. Like they really don't mind. It's just that it's part of procedure to just have everybody, everybody in a, a hospital gown. But if you don't know and you don't know that you can ask, you won't ask. Like there's a lot of things that they need to do out of procedure, out of systems and structures that they have in place, but they're not obligatory and they won't take the time to say, hey, you don't have to wear it. Like they're busy. There's so many moms coming in. There's It's a labor unit. Like they're just rushing. They're doing things by procedure. And if you say like, hey, I want to keep my pajamas on. So I kept my pajamas on under and then I just took my robe off afterwards so I put it on in a photo that I shared on Instagram you guys saw when I was in triage when they were checking me and then they're like just yeah just take it off like they put it on for I put it on to like hide my um, bottom part while they were checking me out because there's people that can be walking around and then you of course want your privacy so of course you're gonna want that robe for yourself there or your pants <laughs> but in that moment you need the robe so they can have access to you so little tangent on like clothing, but if you know these little tricks and tips of like how much decisional power you actually have in the hospital or at home or just in general in your birth, like take power of your birth as well. So we took, we talked about this last week, personal responsibility. We talked about how taking personal responsibility is amazing for you. And it's like a number one tip you need to start using and implementing in your life. Well, for me, birth, since I started thinking about it, because I've always wanted babies, um, I've always known I want to be in power and I want to understand I want to like get to know as much as I can about what I'm going into and what my body's going to do what's happening um just understanding it and knowing how my body's going to function and how I can be in power and take full responsibility of an experience I'm going to be going through that's literally life-changing because it is it is absolutely life-changing to go through birth obviously and all the stories that people have are usually scary and horrible and all of this and, and uncertain. And I wanted to be certain. I wanted to know as much as I could. I wanted to discover. I wanted to see if there were different ways to do things. And that's something that I have very strong personal responsibility in in my life is getting to know different ways to do things, getting curious. So I didn't talk about that last time, but personal responsibility, a big thing of that is definitely being curious, being open, being curious about all the other ways that things can be done and just get, being open to it and this opens your uh what's it called this opens your point of views and your perception and then it makes you a more open person and it allows you to evolve and to grow so much easier that way i think he hears me so he's like moving around 
don't worry we're gonna feed soon okay so let's start with the bird story so that i don't miss out on sharing it i do this for you guys and i do this for me because they're amazing memories to remember and i want to show these to my sons one day um i, I don't want to wake him up he's i think he's like in light sleep right now because he's about to wake up to feed and he's like moving around a little bit He'll cry if he's not happy with me, so I'll stop freaking out. So let's start with my bird story. What happened? So I was, like I told you guys in my last podcast, I was in latent phase, so early labor, from starting the 26th of December. So I started I started dilating the 26th of December. That means that my cervix is starting to open, baby's starting to come down, and there's something called effacement. I'm not a doula, like I said in my other story. Like, if you guys want to research all these things, you need to take what I'm saying as my story and then go do your own research and figure it out or ask me and I'll send you videos of professionals who do these videos on YouTube that are super qualified and informative. But yes, I was the baby's dropping if asthma and i was dilating starting the 26th so that means that there's either mild contractions like little cramp like contractions sometimes you don't even feel it but your cervix is basically getting ready and if you already gave birth once your body knows how to do it so it's doing that with my first baby i definitely did that again two weeks i was in that and then with this one i was in this latent phase for like three weeks that three weeks that's like from zero centimeters to usually four centimeters and then four and above usually you're supposed to start having closer contractions together and then you're like in active labor where they're every like five six minutes or whatever it is and then you're like almost at the hospital so latent phase is really the beginning your body your body is preparing it's opening baby is descending slowly but surely sometimes it can be uncomfortable for certain women sometimes it, it's not for me it wasn't that uncomfortable it was more the mindset that was difficult in that era in that time frame usually you're going to lose what's a, what's called a mucus plug which is a horrible name they should definitely change that name but it just it's a plug that's there to block um the baby like whatever it is i don't even know like the fluid or whatever and then it's like it slowly disintegrates so it allows baby to come down but it's not like your water breaking it's before that if that makes sense it blocks the cervix i'm pretty sure anyways like i said i'm not an expert so i didn't even i didn't even see or notice losing it with this one so i think i lost it incrementally a little little bit at a time over time so you have like the horrible word again you have discharge <laughs> over like whatever a period of time i was in latent phase for a while and then for me that was really difficult because they always say with the first a second baby that's quicker and so i was like okay what's going on why is baby not here and then i was starting to freak out is something wrong what's going on like you just started freaking out and then they also test you a lot here if you're seeing your doctor and you have a, a ob gen they really test you a lot and so like at 41 weeks i had to go i'll explain that's the day i gave birth 41 weeks so i gave birth 41 weeks or yeah, I gave, birth, I gave birth 41 weeks one day because I went 41 weeks one day to the hospital. They wanted to see me the 40, on the 41st week because then when you're 41 weeks, even though it's normal and it happens to a lot of women, they want to see you to make sure that everything's okay. And it's procedure, but it's hard to not get again, to not get overwhelmed and not get freaked out by it because you start asking yourself questions and then they're going to check and then they're going to check the sack and the water. And you're so you get worried about like, is something wrong? And you start going off in your head. I think the hardest part if you have a long latent phase which is important to know because not a lot of not i don't even know if that many women go through that which i should google that stat and give that to you what the average is but not many people go through that phase for that long like i did and if they do they don't talk about it we often see movies the women the water breaks and then chest her babies mine my water broke i'll explain it with him but my waters break at like right before pushing and having the baby so that's not my case um and yeah, it's like latent phase. It's like you're you're working slowly towards labor. You'll have symptoms of labor, and you'll think it's coming in a day, in 24 hours, 48 hours. You're staying home. You're resting. You're trying to do the things to like get ready, and then it's not coming. And so you keep feeling like you're uncertain and something. What's happening? What's going on? And you're in a waiting period, and that waiting period is a waiting period that is very humbling, and it's something that in motherhood I learned to have to slow down i learned and i'm not i'm sitting here doing this but i love doing this so my mom told me not to work and i'm like can i just like do my podcast stuff and all that because i love this as a mom you learn to be in those waiting times and to just accept that as part of it because it is and you can't control like you can't control these types of things you can control your reaction you can take your personal responsibility and learn to chill out learn to relax learn to not let your brain and start chattering and going off and about 
you need to learn to center yourself you need to learn to ground yourself and not let those voices in your head start to go off start to invent stories start to freak you out and start asking all these questions and again i spoke about this i don't really, i speak about this here and there but you have voices in your head and they're not all you they're just programs their fears there's so many different parts to you you're such a complex human being your brain is complex and it's there to keep you safe so it's there to see like something's wrong like we need to identify what's wrong and we need to keep ourselves safe at all times so it's survival and when you understand that you can start stop freaking out that you're having all these thoughts because it's just your brain trying to help you identify what could be dangerous so you stay safe and you stay alive okay it's there to love you and protect you but it's sometimes freaky and it goes off and it's scary and you need to be able to just know like okay it's doing its thing it's smart it's there to save me it's there to make me survive but it's a bit dumb sometimes because it's thinking these things that are completely irrational so that was a tough waiting game for me my mindset would go off sometimes and i would get uncertain and also i was like i worked till the end of like close to the end of my my due date i think until my due date like i was still active and like get up and around and doing things and then i started like cocooning in at home and staying home and not getting out and not going out in the car because i started to be worried that it could happen at any moment and then because of that i was kind of like making myself stay stuck somewhere and like wait but then freak out because it wasn't happening so it was a bad cycle so it, this was a really tough phase for me um, but I was able to like wake up every morning, grab my book, read my book, spend time with my baby, relax. And then like I didn't stay like in those days of like not doing anything that didn't help me. So I, in the days that I could do stuff like film a podcast or I could read the books I love or plan projects or do little things here and there like cleaning and stuff like that that get, got me prepared and organized and kept me moving and up and about that made me feel really good because it wasn't like i'm waiting and then i'm letting my brain go off and i'm kind of like numbing myself on social media which that was not helpful i did that one day and that was not fun so all that to say that this brings us all the way to 41 weeks where they called me and they're like hey you're 41 weeks we want to see you we tried to call you to see you today and we didn't get through to you so we want to see you tomorrow morning so i'm like yeah no problem i'll come see you at 7 30. they booked me first thing 7 30 the next day at the hospital and the hospital is like a 30 minute drive so during that night of 41 weeks i was i had contractions and this happened throughout my pregnant throughout my latent phase i had contractions at night sometimes that would wake me up but they weren't painful like they weren't like intense enough to be like a contraction of labor but on the 41st at night um, I had pretty intense ones that woke me up and I was like, yeah, these are much more similar to what I remember going through with labor when I was actually in labor, in active labor. So this is definitely indicative of like something's coming and I started timing them to just see what's going on and they were every 10 minutes. And so that, that was like in the middle of the night, like three-ish and then 6 a.m. That's when I, I, then I went to bed because it's like if you start having contractions, go to sleep if you can, if it's the middle of the night because you want to rest up because you'll probably be starting labor if and if you don't or if you are if you are or if you're not you want to be rested no matter what so if it's the middle of the night go to bed like i know you're excited i'm excited i wanted my baby but it's the middle of the night i went back to bed and i was able to sleep and then that rest definitely is valuable like you have no idea in order to be able to give birth when you're going to give birth um when that's going to happen so rest when you can for sure that people say that's not a good tip for me it's a great tip i rest when i can when the baby sleeps and if i can sleep at the same time i'm doing it like i think that's a great tip so i started and then at 6 a.m it woke me up again because it was a, a stronger a stronger one I, I believe so it woke me up i timed them they were 10 minutes i'm like okay should i be going to the hospital so i was trying to reach the hospital they were not open yet even though my appointment was at 7 30. i guess they started at 7. um so they weren't answering me i was trying to call them to see like do i drive all the way there what if my labor starts when i'm driving there i don't want to i don't want to be stuck there because my goal and my birth plan and how i did my first birth with my doula is now this second birth i don't have a doula my partner is my doula i always tell everyone that he definitely is he's great he like did all the doula classes with me and he understands and he knows what I want for birth, what are my expectations, and he shows up for me, and he's my person. Like, anyone else can be there, it helps, but like him, I'll explain later on how, what it does for me, but for me, it brings me so much oxytocin, and like the love hormones and all that, when he's with me, and I get so grounded that it helps my birth immensely. So he's like the best partner for myself that I could have, 
and you need to identify for yourself is it my my partner that's my birth partner is that stressful for me if it is and for him like let's not do it let's get a doula like do i want my mom do i want my sister like all these things that i asked myself and that i did for my first and second labors so i'll explain i call the hospital they're like yes you need to come in we just we need to check a couple things to make sure you're good and that you can still be waiting and like you're not nothing's going bad or wrong with the baby basically so of course that's stressful i have to stay focused i'm like okay and obviously my contractions slowed down so contractions definitely slow down if you're like starting to start like if you're in early labor and you're not like it's not started started and even if it started i'll explain when i drove to the hospital contractions slow down they prove this with animals like if you have an animal giving birth and you put lights on let's on a cat and she's giving birth and you put lights on her her labor is going to slow down because it's just normal like your your body's naturally trying to do something like that's supposed to be where your cocoon you're feeling safe if you're an animal like and you're giving birth in the forest and you have your little nest and you're giving birth you're good if a wolf shows up and you're a deer you're going to stop giving labor your body is smart it's going to be like hey now we're not going to survive if we keep going if we keep going here let's stop let's get out run and then we'll keep going so if there's any type of threat that's perceived by the body not the brain by the body really well i guess it's the brain but i mean like let's say you logically know oh it's a light it's not supposed to scare me your body doesn't know and it's going to stop labor and slow down so we start driving to the hospital obviously everything slows down no more contractions i had a couple going there because i was with my partner my baby and i was comfortable but then as soon as i got to the hospital they hooked me up they started monitoring as soon as they monitored i'm like hey i, I keep i am having contractions every 10 12 minutes at this point i think they were and they're pretty strong but like say it's 10 12 minutes it's still early labor and they're like okay we'll see on the monitor if you have any i during those 30 to 40 minutes that they were monitoring me so monitoring a baby's heartbeat and mine and all of that no contractions not one and then i go back to the waiting room I'm like okay so i guess it's, just, it's slowing down it was just a couple uh, again of contractions helping me dilate but i'm not actually going into labor and then i went back in after my monitoring for a scan so there's monitoring and monitoring and then a scan with the uh, gynecologist and i told her about not having contractions but i that i've been having them since the morning every 10 minutes and uh, until i got there and she was like um, that's that's totally normal she's like remember if you put lights on a cat they stop giving labor we put you on a monitor it's stressful you're thinking about all these things you're hearing the baby's heartbeat and actually that's the thing is that i was hearing the baby's heartbeat and it was going um like i had to press a button every time he moved and it was going really fast every time he moved and i was thinking like oh my god what's going on and it was stressing me out and obviously so i was not contracting or like yeah i wasn't contracting and then when i told her about that she's like yeah it's, it's so normal your baby moves faster and that's a great sign if his heartbeat is going faster when he's moving um but i can understand how that's stressful and that's probably why you had no contractions during that monitoring time we leave we come back home the doctor had definitely told me like she's like you're looking great baby's looking great he's in position except he's face up so maybe like go home get on your hands and knees if you're in labor try to be on your hands and knees so it helps him flip actually i don't even know how he gave how he came out if he came up or down no one knows i'll explain that because it was a surprise for all of us doctor at this point is like okay definitely like she's like listen i think you could give birth today this afternoon you could be back here so tell your mom to come she's like i'm not even going to check what you're dilated at because if i do i could rupture something and it could make you start going into labor and she's like since you live 30 minutes away and i know you want to go back home and that's a smart move she's like i encourage you to go home get settled get relaxed get in the zone get in your space get comfortable and like if it happens today i'll see you back here later so i get home and that's exactly what i do i called my mom i'm like mom come get us we dropped the baby off at daycare because he was with us at this point our oldest and i can't believe i have an oldest now so we drop him off at daycare and then we come home my mom gets here i'm resting in bed i was like resting doing things and i was getting up cleaning all these things and i was having mild contractions here and there but i was starting to have some that i was like feeling and i'm like okay maybe this could become something so they were still like very much 10 plus minutes apart but they were there and they were strong contractions and i was like okay i think something's happening um and then every time i would do something like i would get up to like organize something because yeah, my mom was here my mom like, loves cleaning and she's great at it um i would go with her do things and then i wouldn't feel contractions for a while so i was like i guess getting myself um 
or I was maybe stalling it or slowing it down because I was getting up. I don't really know. But anyways, it was like slowing down. That's what was happening for me. And I'm like, okay, I want to really, I want to shower before. If this is happening today, I want to have a good, nice, long shower. I want to relax. I want to clean my hair. Um, and so that's what I did. I get in the shower. I put on uh, my hypnobirthing affirmation meditation. There's one video that I put on a loop for the whole labor. And I had started listening to it at that point. And then I'm listening to it. I'm in the shower. I'm grooving. I'm so comfortable. I'm like lis- literally... I had music on as well I was like dancing to the music and then contractions started coming and I was like having them every six minutes so I was in the shower I was also timing them which is really annoying because I had to dry my hands every two seconds but I was alone in the shower so I was timing them and I was checking them out and they were every six minutes and I was really feeling good I was vibing I was they were like manageable I had the hot water on me I felt really amazing I get out boom they slow down again completely so I'm like, okay, because then when I was in the shower, I told my partner, okay, something's happening, mom, something's happening, they're six minutes apart, like if we go down to five and we stay like that for a while, we're going to be in active labor and it's going to be a sign that we're going into labor very soon. So um, I definitely thought it was a sign, but I get out and it stops. Okay, my loves, so we just had our untracked, our baby untracked, I keep calling it that. So if I get busy or sidetracked, I'm like, sorry, untracked, baby time. So he just had his feed, his dad came in from running his errands he was passing in front of the house and he wanted to give him a kiss so he came to kiss kiss him and cuddle him a bit we fed and changed his diaper and now he's back sleeping because that's what they do at this age i feel like with my firstborn i didn't know and i was like not aware that he their wake windows was an hour it's 45 minutes to an hour went like zero to six weeks and i thought it that most parents i thought he would just fall asleep like newborn sleep all the time well yeah no you gotta put them in their sleep environment like so let's get back on track and finish this birth story we were at the point where i was in the shower it was happening i thought we were getting into active labor really soon we were every six minutes five minutes for two hours is active labor or just every five minutes is active labor when you have contractions every five minutes so get out of the shower i start doing things with my mom organizing they stop completely um and i'm like okay should i be chilling should i be what am i supposed to be doing should i be doing normal stuff should i be relaxing and i felt tired so i'm like okay let me just relax mom's like yeah go down for a nap i'll close your your door close your blinds so i went down for a nap and i slept 30 minutes i had like i kept having contractions but very like apart so around 10 12 up to 17 minutes apart Uh, And then I slept those 30 minutes and if I had one during sleep, I did not wake up. So I was tired enough to sleep through it. I feel like I was passed out. And then I woke up and I was like, okay, no, this is not happening. I'm not having contractions, but I'm going to stay in my room, keep everything um, dark. So I closed my blinds. My partner was not with me. I was alone. I was putting on music to try to get concentrated. But then I had so much time between each contraction that I was getting distracted I wasn't focusing on like the labor and I was doing other things and so when they were coming they were really intense and I had a lot of trouble getting through them and I was like trying to find my groove what position do I want to be in like once you're in it you can find positions that you like or things that you like to do to be comfortable but at that point I had no idea like well, how do I want to be placed right now I'm not sure at this point they're like 17 minutes apart I'm not able to get in the the groove because it's like they're sporadic like 10 12 15 17 which is a lot of time between and and they're really intense and i'm trying different things every time but i'm getting kind of discouraged because i'm like am i gonna have intense contractions like this every 17 minutes for like a long time because this is like this is hard for me to get in the zone get in the groove all of that so this happened for like maybe it was happening for like maybe two hours it happened like that so every 17 minutes And the one in the shower, like I told you, those happened as well. They were happening before every six minutes. So that lasted around an hour and a half. So I was sure I was going into active labor. Then it went, it slowed down again. And I was, uh, uh, when I got out of the shower, it slowed down. I feel like I was in my groove in the shower and in like the right atmosphere, the right headspace, creating the right environment for myself. And when I got out, it kind of like woke me up. It was really bright out. It was a sunny day. All the lights were on. I started cleaning stuff and putting stuff away. And also like putting my bags at the door because I realized it was coming and it slowed everything down. That lasted for an hour and a half. I got in my dark room. I like tried to do all that stuff. And then at some point I called my partner. I'm like, can you just like come and be with me? Because I think it's going to help if you're with me. And and I just, I want you to be with me. And then at that point, I remember I was like, I want him to come because I think like it's going to help me accelerate my contractions. But I also, I don't want to. <laughs> like I had this fear, like this voice of like, 
like these are intense like do i want them to come closer am i going to be able to sustain it am i am i going to be able to get in the zone and release and relax and let them go like pass over me or are they going to hurt all of them and i'm going to be like oh, i don't know how to place myself you know because you need to find tricks for yourself and you need to like be so intuitive in those moments and listen to your body and what it's actually wanting you to do and when you do and you work with your body like i did when i when i'm going to explain right now when i my partner came back with me and i listened to my body and i did what i wanted it to do it was fine like i don't don't go against it like when i was in the bedroom and they were apart and it was annoying me i was going against the contraction and i was like kind of trying to like ride the wave but also like not make it hurt like it's just it was consuming me and i was not able to be focused be in a good headspace you really need to be in good headspace anyways for me that really helped my partner comes up i'm like okay like they're not really happening that much maybe i'm gonna get in the shower like i it got when i was in sh the shower earlier i really liked that and i felt really like good and maybe they're gonna like start coming back so i get in the shower and th they actually start coming back so we get in the shower i put the the lights down i put my candles on like give myself a good vibe um and i put my hypno birthing and music so i wanted two things like i wanted the music to like feel like i'm having a good time i'm feeling good it's good a good labor playlist and I feel good songs and then I had my hypno birthing affirmations playing and that was really helping me and then I was getting my partner to do my pressure points here so if you're not listening to the podcast it's like the hand pressure point you can google it and my lower back ones are the ones that I did for my first labor but I didn't do it as much this time more the hand actually it still hurts when I touch it because he's really strong and he presses really hard um, and you want them to press hard because it's really tension actually I get in the shower but then I was like I wanted to be standing I thought and then I felt like okay my friend was like why are you why are you not in your bath like you did the bath with Lenny the whole time you love being in the water don't you want to do that and I'm like I feel like I want to be standing I'm not sure but yeah you're let's let's do like shower and I'll close the tub so that I can fill up and I'll see if I want to sit down so I start sitting down and I was like really getting into my affirmations and really getting into my breath so between contractions you have like four five six minutes whatever time you have really when you when they're close together and you have you know it's going to be five minutes and you'll have another one use that time to get into the headspace so i was using that time to before the contraction was coming to start my breathing process and i was using a lot of joe dispenza's breath which is not a labor breath it's a breath to activate the pineal gland but that's because i just finished his book recently and he was talking about the pineal gland and how that that's where it's all all the hormones for like oxytocin and the painkiller hormones that we have that i don't know the name but it's complicated it's a complicated name you can look it up but a lot of all our hormones come from there and if you are able to activate the pineal gland it's able to generate even more of if, like the hormones that you need at any given moment and so my goal was to activate it and to ask it to send me those painkiller hormones because i know that they exist because of my first natural labor i remember feeling high at some points in certain contractions where i felt like my body was in trance i didn't feel the pain like i didn't feel like because sometimes there's def like contractions they like for me they hurt like so, like some are super intense super painful and others i was able to overcome and the majority of them in my labor that i'm going to explain and i'm explaining are are the ones that i was able to overcome but i know that it's only because i'm able to activate and get into my breath and get into the right headspace because if i'm not there like the ones i was saying earlier that were every 10 to 17 minutes those ones hurt me like i they were painful and i was like how am i going to give birth naturally and i started doubting myself and when i do that and when I did that, it started getting even worse and hurting more. And then I didn't trust myself and I didn't trust what position I wanted to be in. I wasn't listening to myself. And so I wasn't getting into the right spaces to feel good and get through the contraction. So I was holding it in instead of letting it go and letting it pass through me. So I was doing Joe Dispenza's breath between my five minutes, between my contractions that were closer. And now I was sitting and I was like holding my belly and giving my hand out to my partner. But I was getting so into my meditation and my affirmations, it's like a hypnosis affirmations track. I was getting so into it before the contraction would come that even when it would come, I was staying in that zone of like meditative state and really like staying in that zone, really relaxing, really releasing. And the contraction was not overcoming my body. And like I was able to really release my uterus and let the contraction do its thing. And that's like really extremely helpful and that's something that i learned from all the birth doulas you have online from the nurses at the hospital from giving birth the first time is that the contraction is there to push the baby down and to like release so if when you have a contraction 
like it's pushing and all that and you're and you're going against it like I'm doing it now like I like you're contracting your abs you're up like your shoulders are coming up to your ears your whole upper back is is tense because you're going through that contraction if you're doing all of that while the contraction is happening you're going against it if you're working with it and you're staying calm and your shoulders are staying calm and you're letting it go down and you're just following it and you're releasing and you're letting it do its job and what it's trying to do it's it doesn't hurt especially if you're able to get so into your like meditative state that you're listening to like you're activating the right hormones I, a lot of my contractions that i had in the bath so they were five minutes apart and they went quickly to three minutes apart and three minutes is like very close to like like you have to go to the hospital you're gonna push soon we call them they're like you guys better come it's the second baby you're you're better off coming but the ones in the bath that i was having every five and then there were every three minutes every two minutes three four three three those ones i was able to be in a trance like state where some of them like my eyelids were fluttering where like i was so such in my meditative state and my hypnosis track and my breathing that even through the contraction like I know my body was doing its thing, but I wasn't in it, if that makes sense. I was kind of like able to disconnect. And I can compare this for anyone who's listening who didn't give birth or, or needs to like understand this feeling. If you have ever done a cold plunge or if you want to do one and you're getting in the cold plunge and you're doing the breathing and you're kind of your eyes are closed and they're kind of fluttering and you're you're calming your body and you're able to resist, like uh, release the resistance and be in the cold and be able to quiet your mind. That's how it feels for me when I was doing those contractions. So those contractions were every three minutes. And the ones that were, that were painful, I was like trying movements and I was dancing. And like, because when the ones I had in the shower, like the first ones were really good. And I was like moving my hips, feeling good. And then I, I kept trying to do that in my, in my room. And some, it felt good, others not. And then I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to like being, be active, all these things? No, for me, what I realized is like sit down. So I sat down in my bath. I'll share a picture. I, I sat down in my bath facing my partner, made him do my pressure points, and I was really getting into that zone of like, I'm not in my body, I'm meditating, I'm able to ask for all these hormones and they're overcoming and flooding my body and they're helping me be completely comfortable in this intense feeling and this intense power that is happening, but I have power in it, in this situation. And another aspect that helps me so much personally, and it can help you in different ways, but for me it was my birth partner, which is my partner, um, but for you it could be your, you can have like the first labor I had was my mom and my sister were with me, and my partner was like moving around, coming in, out, in, out, but like he was with us a lot, and at the end he was with me the whole time. Um, but you know, he was sitting in front of me, holding my hand, and he was putting his forehead on my forehead, and when I was in my meditative state, he was with me and like, I just felt his energy and his love. And that helped me so much to have even more oxytocin, which is so important to advanced labor. It's like the, if they give you, if they induce you, they give you Pitocin. It's a form of oxytocin. You have it. You can generate it yourself if you believe in yourself. Okay. And if you put the right um, environment in place and you have the right people and you feel safe. So I feel safe. I felt loved. I was with my partner. So he was either putting his forehead here or like having his head close to mine and we were like together and that helped me extremely advance quickly. I felt that like oh, my contractions were going much, much faster when I was with him and it was I was able to really stay in the zone and feel great and feel powerful and feel safe. And that was my goal. The first labor and this labor with him, his mission that I gave him is make me feel safe. You're my protector. You're making my environment feel safe. I trust you with this and you're making... Like I'm trust giving you all my trust and all my, my love and you're making me feel this environment is safe and I can give labor, I can labor and give birth and I'm okay. And that's exactly what he did. So those uh, contractions were really good because he was with me and then I was asking him in between some of them, like, okay, start getting our stuff ready because we need to go because we're a 30 minute drive from the hospital. So he was getting our last minute things ready. He was having a quick bite and then he would come in when I needed him. But I was also a, such in a good headspace that I was able to do a couple of those contractions alone um, and let him get us ready to leave with the car seat and all because I was really able to get into that headspace. And like I said, being like a trance, like, like my contractions are going through me and I'm able to sustain them and they actually don't like hurt me. Then when you get up and when you're in labor and you're three minutes apart and you're sitting and you're in water, it's much different than when you get up. Okay, when you get up, it's right away the baby's putting pressure on um, your cervix. Oops, I don't want to wake up my baby. And that definitely makes things go faster and makes them more intense, right? 
getting up was more intense, but I knew, so I was getting up and I was sitting down on a chair. I was getting dressed from sitting down position because I knew that if I'm standing, they're going to be intense and I don't want them to overcome me and I want to stay powerful and in control. So I was sitting down, I was doing my contractions, sitting down, taking my time, getting dressed. What I, then I asked my partner to dim all the lights in the in the house because I knew that if the lights were open, it would stimulate me. So I'm like, okay, dim all the lights. My baby was listening to um, a movie with his nana. I walked over, I sat down, I asked my baby to sit down with me, to give me a hug and a kiss. Um, and then I had a couple of, I had contractions every three minutes going down the stairs too. I had to stop at the end of the, the stairs at the door. I had to stop when I sat in the car. Like I had a couple of contractions, but I was able to really let them go through me and like calm down. Then we get in the car, we drove to the hospital. On the 30 minute drive to the hospital, I had two contractions, okay? This says so much and proves so much that if you're in an environment where it's stimulating, you're not in your comfort zone, you're not in your space, you're not feeling that safe because obviously we're on the road, it's winter, there's cars, there's lights, there's all these things. Um, yeah, so I had two contractions in the car, thank God, because like there were, because I'm not in my zone as much as in my bathtub and in my birth space, they're harder to get through so i didn't want that like i didn't want to have any so i was like kind of like am i gonna close my eyes no like let me stay stimulated so i slow it down a bit um and i was already really going really quickly so i'm like let's slow this labor down i don't want contractions right now we're driving so we had two and then at the hospital i'm like okay last time i had like parked and walked all the way like contractions walking for like 30 minutes i don't know why why i did that i'm like babe put the car in front of the hospital, get a wheelchair. I don't want to stand up because I know that if I stand up again, I'm accelerating things and I want to stay in this like momentum that I'm building and that I'm following. And I don't want to stand up and for the baby to push down and for like it to be giving me bigger contractions. And right now, like I want to slowly get there, not like stimulated by walking all the way to the unity, which is like kind of far. So I got him, I got him to get me a wheelchair and to bring me to the front. And I put a hat over my eyes as we got into the hospital. I sat down and I held my belly and I had my hypnobirthing in my ears and my hat. The purpose of that was like, okay, let's get back in the zone. We're going to triage. I want them to admit me. I want to be advanced. I don't want them to tell me um, your contractions are not uh, close enough. Because like they, they, when my partner called, they're like, is she suffering? And he's like, no, she's fine. But I'm like, babe, it's not because I'm fine. It's because I'm able to get through them. We still need to go. Like, <laughs> it's not a question of suffering. Like, my contractions are every three minutes. Like, we need to go to the hospital. They were like three, two minutes. And it's like, we need to go. And when he said the, the time apart, they're like, oh, yes, come quickly. It's your second baby. He like, you need to come. So we go. And then so I put my hat over my, my face. And then I had my mask because it's a hospital. We still need to wear masks. And I was sitting and they brought me all the way to the ward. And again, my partner, his goal in this that he knows and that we did for our first labor is he's securing the environment. He's making me feel safe. So I know and I trust him that he's do he's dealing with people that are going to ask him where we're going, what what's going on, what we're doing. And I'm not listening to them. And I'm saying it's really important to have someone that's with you, advocating for you. And like when you're going to the hospital, um, if you want to stay in your in your momentum and you want to stay focused and you want to be able to get through your contractions when you're there and not slow down or it's okay to slow down like I did in the car but it, uh, you don't want to be like having intense contractions and people asking you a million questions but that you can't answer and then you're starting to suffer because you're getting out of your focus and out of your mindset that you built up for yourself through all this work so like putting a hat over your eyes if headphones in and having someone advocate for you so if you need my partner um, really really helps you to stay in that zone and people respect that and like they'll ask you questions they have to if you're going to the hospital it's procedure but if you want to stay in the zone and you want to stay in your thing give that to your partner and tell him to speak up for you and he will and he'll take over and you'll feel, be able to stay in your zone and there's certain between contractions sometimes I would answer stuff and I didn't mind and I'm super down to like get to know the nurses I actually love my nurses where we um where we gave birth with Lenny the first time and second time now with Sunny I actually love them so much and I don't mind exchanging with them and I had great conversations with them and they're amazing so like I actually exchange with them and like put up my hat between contractions but going there and like signing in all that no so then I go to triage kept my head over my my uh, my uh my eyes my headphones in I told her please talk to my partner like I need to focus stay here I have a lot of contractions they're really close so she's like no no worries um and she was really respectful of like what I wanted to do and how I wanted to place myself and she saw that he was doing pressure points so she was doing them with us and she was also really helpful in telling me like uh, to release so she was helping me remind like 
remind me to release my shoulders, let it go down, let the contraction go down and let it happen and let it go through. And she was really good with like words of affirmation. I was so grateful for that first nurse that I met. And then my second nurse as well was so good. So the the first nurse examined us. She's like, okay, you're seven and eight, 7.80. She's like, my partner's like, you're so precise. She's like, no, I think you're eight actually. She's like, but your water's not broken. So you're eight, we need to get you in a room right now. Let's get you in a room. Let's get you in the wheelchair. You, that's what you want. Like I'm like I'm not walking. You guys are letting me get in, the, stay in the wheelchair. I felt it felt too intense when I was standing, and I really listened to myself and my gut. And thank God because I would have given birth right then. <laughs> so I'm like I'm in my wheelchair. They brought me to my room. We met our our other nurse. Our first nurse let us go. She was so kind. Um, and then they set up the bed for me. At first, I was sitting down. I was sitting down in my wheelchair I didn't want to get up they wanted me to get up and I didn't want to and then um because I was like going through contractions and I wanted to stay in my zone so again my hat my headphones pressure points breathing through my contractions releasing staying in in that power in that control and then I get on the bed because they wanted me to be on the bed and was I sitting yeah I was sitting because I was really comfortable sitting for this labor for some reason so again I'm sitting I'm holding my belly I'm getting through my contractions and then at some point they're like Maybe you want to get on your hands and knees because your water is not broken. Maybe that's going to help advance things. And they were also trying to talk to me about breaking my water. So again, they're talking to you. You do not need to answer and they will not be mad. And like, it's so hard for me to like not answer because I feel like, oh, I need to, you're talking to me. Like the doctor had also come in at this point to present himself. He was such a sweetheart. Um, And he came in and I'm like, my face was in the bed going through a contraction in my pillow with my hat. And I'm like, wait, sorry, I can't talk right now. And I'm like doing my contraction and they're so sweet like he started rubbing my back where they know like how to help you like they're they're in that domain so they started rubbing my back helping me through my contraction and talking to me like without me having to look at them and when I was ready I looked at them when I was ready I did my things but like I was staying in my zone in my bubble and not feeling um too triggered and if you want to give birth naturally and you're someone that like cannot be disturbed and if someone talks to you you'll have to answer and then you'll feel like obligated and all these things and it'll stress you out consider another environment consider uh your home consider like in maison naissance so like a birth house what is it called well like there's there in quebec they're called house birth houses you can give birth there and they're more like a home environment um you really need to consider that for yourself and see like what you need and how deeply you can stay focused and in your meditative state because you'll need to be in that state in order to get through your contractions and if you're not able to stay in that state when you're stimulated by people around you and like strangers um, and you're not sure that your doctor's going to be nice and all these things like where I gave birth is La Salle and I know they're insane and they're good and they're amazing. They're loving. They support giving birth. If you give birth naturally, they support that. At this point, they're like, OK, we could rupture your water if you want. And that'll get things going really quickly. And pr- probably baby will want to come out right away and we'll push. Um, and they're like, or we wait and like you have more contraction than you see. But if you want to go faster, you can do that or you can go through more contractions and like see and then see again at that point I got stressed out and I was like okay shoot like am I able to sustain my meditative state am I able to sustain getting through these contractions with such ease am I able to sustain that like some of them had been intense because I was getting obviously bothered and they're really intense and they're really like long long much longer and I was like am I able to sustain my breathing and my visualization and my affirmations in these contractions or are they going to go on for an hour? My water's not going to break. I'm going to start stressing. I was stressing. I'm like, okay, I don't know what I want. Like, Or I also didn't want them to rupture my water and for it to come become super strong and for me to not have an epidural because and not be able to sustain the pain anymore and to have really a bad, a bad moment, if you want. <laughs> and so I was like a little bit confused. And then I'm like... I and you don't have much time to think because your contractions are like two minutes. So I'm like, okay, g- give me two seconds. I have a contraction. So I have my contraction. And then I'm like they're like look you're super zen the doctor said this to me he's like you're in your zenitude <laughs> you're super zen keep doing what you're doing let me just go check on another patient i'm right around the corner i'll be right back and then we'll decide okay but like just stay here right now you're zen do a couple contractions we'll decide afterwards so he leaves this the nurse stays with us she puts like she helps my partner to show him how to um to, to help me like release during contractions. So like she shows him to my pressure points on my lower back, which also shows him how to move my hips to help me release when the contraction comes and like be loose down there because that's the point is to release with the contraction, let it, let it do its thing. So that's what we're doing. 
he's helping me and then she's like okay guys I'm just gonna go check on a, a patient and I'll be right back and you guys are good if you need anything I'm right a button away you just press this button and she's like if there's an emergency you pull there I, I didn't even look because I'm like why would there be an emergency my partner didn't look like we didn't look we're like okay button emergency perfect I was going through a contraction she's like I'll let, I'll let you guys do your thing she leaves 20 seconds or like 30 seconds after she leaves huge contraction comes on I feel it I feel it I'm like this is a big one I'm like babe, 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 babe. I get my partner to like come it's a super intense one like I felt it was a huge wave like it just like it like slammed into me I'm like oh shit so I'm like literally leaning hospital beds they um separate so if you're in a birth ward I'm pretty sure they separate so the lower part of the bed goes down so you can kneel down and have your elbows on the middle other middle part of the bed and you can be kneeling on your bed your bed is like literally opening and splitting and going down so if you're watching the video you can see but if you're not you can imagine the lo- like the end of the bed splits and goes down and you can kneel and like as if you're praying on your knees that was my position when she left and I was working like that and I was trying to like go through my contractions and let my body do its thing and before she left I was like hey I have this like I just had a contraction and I really felt like push because she saw I was pushing like I was making these sounds and I and I was pushing and she's like hope don't push yet because you're at eight so I know you have that feeling she's like don't push yet because you're you're not dilated fully so you're going to push against the cervix and you might like um, irritate your your cervix and it'll slow down so don't push but like do release and do let it do let it let it do its thing but don't push with it like you're not we're not at the point where we're pushing so you don't need to push with the contractions because when you're at pushing and you're at 10 you use your contractions to push that's what happened in my first labor you can listen to that i'll link it below so i'm like okay no push like i won't push i'm not gonna irritate my cervix i'm just gonna let it release and i'm gonna let it do its thing so she leaves i'm on my hands and knees in the bed like i told you in the position and this huge contraction comes on and then it comes on like the contraction starts like it's like always like a wave how they feel so they come on and they feel like a wave and it goes like you feel it coming like you feel like oh my god it's coming it's coming it's coming and then it's coming and it's like a wave and it's, it gets super intense so when i get to like the peak of this contraction like it gets intense super quick i get to the peak and i literally like i, I had like this vision and like this feeling of like the baby whoo, going super quick down the canal like i feel like i saw him like and I was like, oh my God. And she told me not to push. I'm like, and then my contractions, instead of like, like usually it peaks and then it goes down and then it's like one minute and a half. It didn't stop. It kept going. It's like another contraction added on top of it. Then I had this huge urge to push. Like they talk about this so much. And if you watch labor videos, especially second birth, I had this huge urge to push. I couldn't resist it. So like I, I just, I pushed with it. Like my whole body, like just, the contraction like wanted to push so like I let it do its thing and I'm like going through my contraction but I'm like obviously making so much more sound and all that so my partner's like what what I'm like look I'm like the baby the baby like I literally like I saw him go down my canal and then with the pushing feeling I felt him I felt his head and his shoulders pop out so I start screaming like literally the baby the baby like I knew his head and his shoulders were outside of me I'm like pressing the button because I could reach my button I'm like he's coming he's coming i was like screaming my partner's behind me like what's happening and then again i didn't stop the contraction i had another one right on top of that one like it's like this didn't stop it was like one on top of the other another contraction comes on and it's literally like the baby just felt like came out like this contraction was like i couldn't like i couldn't stop it just everything just came out and i didn't even have I didn't even push like my contractions were just so like boop 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 back to back intense intense intenser one on top of the other and the baby just came out pushed himself up because the contractions are pushing the baby out obviously and my body just did its thing like I did not push my baby out he like fell out like it's insane he released outside of me like whoop on the bed my partner's there sees the baby I had a little blanket on my booty he lifts the the blanket he's like the baby so, and then right away they were not they had just left the doctor and the nurse they had just just left me to like do my thing and they come right back in they pick up the baby for me they're like take your baby mommy he's on the bed so he's they're like reach down and it, I was so in shock for the, those two seconds I have a video of that I don't know if I'll share because it's a lot of like we don't see anything of me but I mean it's not well it's TMI if some people are disgusted by that but let me know and I'll share it with you guys um, but like yeah the baby he's in like under me obviously I'm on my hands and knees so I grab your baby so I grab him and then I like had to like 
pause and be like I could cry like that's insane I had to pause and be like oh my god like my baby like how, what are you doing there like how did you come out so quickly like it was it was just mind-blowing like I was waiting to go through contractions for my water to break and then for like expecting to push for like at Lenny I pushed for 45 minutes which is quick but like you can push for a long time whatever whatever happens but honestly this was so like natural and like organic and just happened so quickly so he popped out of me I grabbed him I like I was like chilling with him whatever like kissing him so excited to meet him but like it took me two seconds because when he was out of me and then they came in and I'm like I don't know I don't know what happened like I didn't understand I was like I'm like what's going on what's going on like I had to register it happened so fast and so intensely and so releasing kind of situation that I had to take two seconds to be like the baby is outside of me <laughs> like what what just happened it was absolutely insane we were mind blown we were so happy so he comes out I have him on me and then we do uh, my my partner yeah, the time that like they come in, they help us get like turned around on the bed, all these things. Um, we do clampage tardif, which is called in French, which is like you wait for the blood flow to go to the baby. So you wait for the blood to go to the um, the baby from the umbilical cord. When he comes out, it's still like throbbing and like alive. And oftentimes they cut really quickly. We wait, we ask to wait. So like we waited anyways because of all the things that happened. And then he cut the cord. What happened as well? Then obviously you deliver the placenta. This is something else that like even i forgot that i would have to do this so, like he's out i'm like yes but then i'm like oh no i still have to deliver my placenta so the doctor is uh, he was amazing he helped me with that um and like that just happened naturally i got to see my placenta which is like this is maybe so weird for some but for me i was like wow this is so cool like the placenta is just amazing my baby was in there it's an amazing um full of amazing things for your baby for you like the placenta is just insane look it up look up stem cells like it's just insane what the, the placenta does so we saw the placenta whatever the doctor was just so nice he was so funny and then i had the baby on me uh, skin to skin and then obviously the baby came out so quickly so i tore a little bit and it was like a, light, a minor tear because yeah he just pff, dropped out um and he's like oh like i can stitch you up it's one stitch like either I just put it in or he's like either I stitch one or I put the needle to freeze you and then I stitch you up but he's like that's two needles instead of one let's just do one I'm like yeah whatever I can do this I just gave birth <laughs> like I can do this um, but at this point I was so tired and I was like feeling everything like I, I like I couldn't deal anymore like my legs were shaking I didn't want to be touched anymore I don't want like anything to happen but he was so sweet so he did it but he did it and he's like, it eh, doesn't look great. He's like, I'm doing it again, but I'm going to freeze you because I see that you're like uncomfortable and like, let's not do this to you. Like <laughs> you just had a really intense experience. And so he froze me and then he did his thing, whatever. He stitched me up really nicely. And I know like he did because I feel <laughs> good. Postpartum is really something else as well. So like you have trouble peeing and all these things and you have to like wash up with water because you can't like touch down there because of that. So forever anyone who gives birth like this is just normal and it happens so i'm like really grateful that he did it really really well and um that's what happened for all of that and then i was with the baby the baby right away wanted to breastfeed um and then with my firstborn it was so hard to breastfeed we had such a hard time and i was so stressed and i didn't know what i was doing and i felt so out of it by the way this one obviously because of the first one and how stressful it was and how much help I needed. I had went to the Jewish General Hospital and they had really helped me with um, like how to have baby latch on. So I knew what to do and I was like just listening to myself and he wanted to latch and I saw that he wanted to. And my doctor at the Jewish General Hospital had really shown me how to do like the natural latch. So um, I let him latch on kind, kind of naturally, but kind of guiding him, like putting him at the right place. Um, but he latched on and he drank and it was great. Like it was really good and it was much better this time around because I was more prepared and there's so much things that happen at the hospital so many questions all these things and if it's your first time I'm telling you that right now because it's like no that's gonna happen but remember to stay like zen and remember to stay calm and like oftentimes they ask you a million things like did he pee did he drink when did you drink when did you take your child and all did you put your witch hazel in your underwear did you do this did you do that like they ask you so many things and sometimes it feels like you're getting judged I felt that way and even this time I felt that way and I had to remind myself like hope oh, they're just doing procedures you're there they're just checking on you they're just asking they're making sure the baby's gonna be well fed that he's good that you're that he's okay to go home with you and that nothing's wrong so they have a million questions do not feel judged release release it and 
like don't defend yourself like you're good you're a good mom you know what you're doing um and if it's your first time and you listen to this like you're great you do you did great it's okay to not know everything like i again this time like show me again how to put the diaper on do i put it under the umbilical cord on top like i don't remember and the nurses are always usually so kind when you ask them these questions and they give you tricks so like for us they give me a little trick to flip my diaper inside uh, inside because he's tiny and like he needs the diaper is too high for new for newborn for like his umbilical cord so yes just know that it's like be prepared but also don't judge yourself and give yourself some love and just remember to come back to yourself remember to come back into your personal power and to like not judge yourself not let yourself get overwhelmed by everyone around you and just stay grounded and true to you and like go back to your zone because if you're able to go back to that zone and you're able to create that space for yourself in your mind and when you meditate you'll be able to create that for yourself in labor you'll be able to create that for yourself after labor and in certain situations and you'll feel really good about it okay so this is my bird story in a nutshell if you want to hear about postpartum let me know um i'll be filming a couple of vlog clips so you'll have that and you'll be able to see that in my vlogs and see just how we're getting on for my day my weekly vlogs um but for the podcast i wanted to share the labor story i wanted to share how you can use your mindset to overcome for some for some that might say it's the worst pain in their life like i understand it's freaking intense but you're able to master it you're able to use your mind in another way where it's not going to freak out it's not going to think anything dangerous and it's not going to contract it's going to release and you're able to really get there and it's going to give you so much power and you'll feel so good about yourself and it's just amazing so i hope that this was inspiring to you i hope that you liked my bird story i'm going to stop chatting because he just got into a lighter phase of sleep and i see he's like moving with my words so i'm gonna stop chatting and my other baby's coming home so i'm gonna rest before they get here then we'll have some food and we're going to bed early with my baby because it's night number three that's usually a regression for babies we'll see what happens let's hope we're good so i hope this was inspiring to you i hope that if it was if you're a mom or if you're a guy or whatever it is it gave you intel and it gave you inspiration of how your mind can come in and take control and how you have the right hormones you can have confidence in yourself like your body is made to do this and it's just amazing and before i let you go also like you know what you need for yourself you know what you need for your environment i give two natural births i had two natural births in the hospital okay some might say like why aren't you giving your natural birth at home because for me to feel 100 percent comfortable and like i can give birth naturally i know that if i'm in an environment where it's a hospital that makes me confident in that in knowing that there's things around me there's people around me with their procedures that are developed with the 21st century to come in and save me or baby if something is to happen because i am someone who's anxious and i am thinking the worst case scenarios all the time for me that's comfortable for somebody else that could be triggering so you need to know engage yourself and you need to be just honest with yourself and put yourself in the right environments if for you you want to give a natural birth and you know that going in a hospital is not the place for you it's going to be triggering all these things and it won't be reassuring do not go to the hospital to give a natural birth do it at home like there are all so many resources today so many resources midwives doulas anything you want like it's insane we're so lucky we're able to give birth how we want and there's so much power and control in it t- t- today in this t- day and age and in the past obviously like we always gave birth naturally then there's a short time it became super intense and like hospital and everyone was hospital and now i feel like it's coming back the natural births and all that and it's a beautiful thing but like you need to connect with you so why am i giving birth in a hospital naturally because for me the hospital is a safe space and i feel great there especially my hospital that we chose and then the hospitals and the staff that we have there so that's why i wanted to add that because i feel like forgot to talk about it in the whole thing and that's something i wanted to say that for me it's really really uh, it's really really what's it called soothing to me to be in that space and i want to be there because it, re- it makes me know like okay we're doing it natural but if something were to happen i'm there already whereas if i was home and if something were to happen i would have to go somewhere that would flip me out and then i wouldn't be able to give birth at home and i would probably stall at home and like not be able to be in my zone and not be able to trust so trust yourself figure out what it means to you what you want for yourself and if it's not about labor and you're listening to this know that you have so much power into listening to yourself listening to your gut listening to your intuition going through hard things going through 
things that people say is impossible to do, which is like having birth without an epidural, without painkillers, without anything, and you're able to do that for yourself. You're able to overcome that. You're able to have a great moment in it and to make it the story that you want for yourself. So you have full power here. Take your power back in this situation or any situation it is. Watch the last podcast on personal responsibility if you want to hear more about this, and we will chat again soon, guys. Love you, baby just called. Thank you.